This is the first video in a five part series looking at how to traverse, add and remove from data structures. In this video, we take a look at linked lists. So this video covers how to traverse, add items to and remove items from the linked list data structure. We introduced the concept of linked lists in a previous video. If you've not yet seen it, we suggest you watch Data Structures Part 1, Linked List, first. We've already covered the various ways we can create or implement a linked list. In addition, you need to be able to trace and write code that can traverse a linked list, add an item, remove an item. You can achieve this by using either an array and procedural programming or an object-orientated approach. The exam board recommends you gain a general understanding of these methods backed by practical experience implementing them, as opposed to trying to memorize any particular code pattern. We will start by looking at how to add an item to a linked list. Let's add Carol to this linked list, which is stored in alphabetical order. Carol will need to go after Ben and before Craig. First, we check if there is free memory for a new node to hold Carol. It's important that you check a data structure is not full before you attempt to add an item. If it is, you should stop and report an error. Students often forget this step and lose an easy mark in the process. We can see there is space available as we have a free pointer set to address 5. We're using an array to implement our linked list with a second linked list to keep track of the free storage locations in the array. We could just as easily use objects and do away with the free space linked list altogether. We now insert our data, Carol, into the node at position 5, pointed to by the free pointer. If we're using an object orientated approach to implement our linked list, we would simply create a new node and insert Carol into it. There would also be no need to use a second linked list for storing available free spaces. We now have a couple of special situations to check for. First, we check if the linked list is empty. If it is, our newly added node becomes the first item in the linked list, and we can create a start pointer to it and then stop here. However, in our example, the linked list is not empty. We should also check if our new node should be placed before the first node. If it should, our new node becomes the first node, we will need to change the start pointer to it and ensure the new node points to the second node, and then we can stop. However, in our example, Andy is the first item in our linked list and Carol is after Andy alphabetically. So we've determined that our new node needs to be placed somewhere inside the linked list. Starting at the first node, we proceed through the linked list in a linear fashion, comparing each item with the value of the new node, Carol, until we find the correct position or reach the end of the list. We discover Carol needs to go after Ben and before Craig. Next, we set the new node to point to where the previous node pointed. Here, our new node, Carol, needs to be updated to point to node 4, which contains Craig. We now have to set the previous node to point to our new node. That means the node containing Ben needs to be updated to point to node 5, which contains Cal. Finally, as we are implementing our linked list with an array, we need to update the free pointer so it points to the next available storage space. Next, let's look at how to remove an item from a linked list. Let's delete Ben from this linked list, which is stored in alphabetical order. First, we need to check if the linked list is already empty. It is important you check a data structure is not empty before you attempt to remove an item. If it is, you should stop and report an error. Students often forget this step and lose an easy mark in the process. We can see the list is not empty, so we can proceed to the next step. We now have a special situation to check for whether the first item in the linked list is the one to be deleted. If it is, we simply need to update the start pointer so it points to the next available node and then stop. 
However, in our example, the item we want to delete is Ben and the start pointer is pointing to Andy. So we've determined that the node we want to delete is somewhere inside the linked list. Starting at the first node, we proceed through the linked list in a linear fashion, comparing each item with the value of the node we want to delete until we find the correct node or reach the end of the list. We discover the node we want to delete is Ben, which is at address 1. Next, we update the previous node's pointer to point to the next node. So we need to update the pointer for the node containing Andy, so it now points to node 4, Craig. Note how the contents of address 1 haven't actually been deleted. They're still there, but we've updated the pointers in our linked list so the item is no longer included. As we're using an array to implement our linked list and a second linked list to maintain a list of available free spaces, we must finish by updating the free pointers. In our example, we need to update the free pointer to point to address 1, which used to contain Ben, and then make the node point to the previous first node in our free list. Note again how Ben is still technically stored at address 1. Nothing is really deleted from a computer. Instead, the linked list is implemented in such a way that the node at position 1 is now marked as free. Then, if a new item is added, this space would be overwritten. Finally, we'll take a look at how to traverse through a linked list, outputting the contents as we go. First, we need to check if the linked list is empty. Remember, as always, it's important you check a data structure is not empty before you attempt to traverse it. If it is, you should stop and report an error. Forgetting this step can prevent you from gaining an easy mark in the exam. We can see the list is not empty, so we can proceed to the next step. We start at the node being pointed to by our start pointer. We now output the contents of the current node, in this case, Andy. We now follow the pointer from node to node, outputting as we go, until we reach the end of the list. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key questions. How do linked lists work? How do you create a linked list? How do you add an item to a linked list? How do you remove a data item for a linked list? And how do you traverse a linked list? We know that getting to grips with data structures and all the algorithms associated with them is a very tricky area of the course. And so we've produced a book called Essential Algorithms for A-Level Computer Science that's available on Amazon. It covers all the data structures you need to know about, along with the algorithms you need to perform on them, and it covers all the exam boards. We overview each data structure, discussing its typical applications and the operations you can perform on it. We provide a QR code that jumps off to a useful page of additional resources. We then take each data structure and the algorithms you need to perform and present them first in simple structured English, then in a diagrammatic format, then in pseudocode, and finally, we present you with fully coded algorithms which you need to cover on the data structures in both Python and VB, so you can actually code them up and practice them yourselves.